the blowtorch is back, but does that mean that winter is ending early? What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kagas with you. And in this video, we are going to answer that. We're going to look in the short term first to talk about this huge warm up, and then we're going to look more in the long range to so the middle of February and give you that hint that winter may not completely be over just yet. Before we break all that down, if you want to stay updated, on the weather for the rest of winter and as we get into spring severe weather season and beyond you have to hit subscribe please do that if you happen to find this content helpful please hit that thumbs up button it really does help us out a lot also i would love to see where you're tuning in from post in the comments what the weather is doing where you live let's get to it here we go this is the temperature departure from normal now on Wednesdays, we are starting that blowtorch, and anywhere there's yellow, orange, or red, that's where we are way above normal for this time of the year, where we're in the greens and dark blues. That's where we are below normal. So really, the only colder anomalies across the United States right now is going to be in Texas and through parts of the plains. Also, we have other below normal temperatures in parts of the uh, Cascades and the Sierra Nevadas and to the western side of the United St States. Everywhere else, though, look how warm it is relative to normal. And that is something that really continues and intensifies as we move into Thursday and to Friday. This is now Friday, January 26th. Let me clear all my lines out of the way and just look at this bright kind of purple color or pink through parts of Virginia into the mid-Atlantic. Now, again, this is all relative to normal. We're talking, though, about air temperatures about 20 to 30 degrees above normal. Remember, just last week or the last 10 days, we had this bright purple or white showing up on this end of the spectrum, which indicated 30-ish degrees below normal. So again, a huge turnaround relative to normal across a big chunk of the country. And this is something that's gonna be with us for the next several days. Here we go on Thursday. And again, you'll notice one thing, I'm talking to my friends in the upper Midwest here, Bismarck, Rapid City, Minneapolis, we don't have a dash in front of this. This is 21 degrees for a low temperature in Bismarck, 28 in Rapid City, 31 about the freezing mark in the Twin Cities. Now, if you're in the South, you're probably like, well, that's cold. Believe me when I tell you that a low temperature of 31 in Minneapolis or 28 in Rapid City in the end of January, that is really, really warm. You'll see people grilling out in shorts and t-shirts, maybe not a shirt on at all, in that kind of weather. I mean, in the afternoon, we're heading back up to around 40 in the Twin Cities, mid-40s in Rapid City. So again, it may seem like it's cold, but relative to normal, again, that blowtorch is right here. Look at us, though, in the south, hanging around 70 in San Antonio, Houston, back to around 80 in Orlando, into Miami, Jacksonville. We're back in the mid to upper 70s. So huge warm up i mean this warmth is significant this stays with us through friday especially again mid-atlantic south into the southern plains temperatures hanging around 70 degrees in houston again pushing 80 on friday in orlando again in some cases in the southeast and in the deep south we're talking about record territory uh, likelihood of records to fall so going forward out now through the next eight to 14 days so this is going to take us through the first week of february this is from the climate prediction center look at all the red on the map the darker the red the higher the probability that we are going to have above average warmth really the only spot that's going to be uh, neutral chance or below is going to be into the extreme western corner of the united states uh, desert southwest into california oregon into washington everywhere else though especially around the Great Lakes, where we were just freezing. Detroit, Chicago, Minneapolis, into Green Bay. Really, really warm, again, relative to normal. I want to show you the upper-level pattern to kind of talk about uh, the next 10 days here and what we're looking at. And then we're going to get into kind of that long range. Uh, if you are a fan of the channel, and if you are, please hit that subscribe button or the thumbs up button then you would know we like to look at oscillations. And we're going to break all that down in just one second. A lot of squiggly lines, but they mean something. And they're going to hint at that winter is not over yet. So um, I wanted to make sure we're answering the question early. And right at the beginning of the video, I mentioned, like, yeah, winter's going to come back. I don't want to leave you guys hanging. I know your time is valuable. So here we go. Big area of high pressure. That is pumping up the warmth right in through here. There's that little dip in the jet stream that is bringing some of that cooler air still to parts of the plains. Now, there is going to be the chance, just kind of tangent from the warmth, uh, with this dip in the jet stream right here, we could have a couple of areas of severe weather as we get into the weekend through parts of the deep south. So that is what we're going to be watching uh, as that little ripple comes through. You will notice, though, look at where all the blue and purple color is. Remember last week, that was all invading the United States. Now, the big polar jet stream is strong, and it's keeping all of that cold 
up into the Arctic, well into northern Canada, well to the Hudson Bay area, where it would typically reside. So some big time warmth there. Now let me clear my screen here. Notice what happens as we get into the first part of February. We have, if this model holds, we have kind of a quasi omega block. And what I mean by that is, this kind of looks like the Greek letter omega. We have an upper low here cut off. We have another upper low here cut off. And then we have a big upper high right here. So that would mean that we have a lot of warmth in the nascent midsection all the way up to the Hudson Bay pretty much through Minnesota, Iowa, getting into the plains in southeast. And then we have some of that cooler air kind of spilling in in this direction as we get into the first couple of days of February in the northeast and then in the Pacific Northwest and desert southwest. So for that, that gets us through February 3rd, and we showed you the Climate Prediction Center forecast again going out to the first week of February, which has things pretty toasty relative to normal. But I want to show you that winter may not be over just yet, and we're going to be focusing on the middle part of February for a change. So now we're going to be looking at the Arctic Oscillation. All my weather nerds, all my weather friends out there. We know about the Arctic Oscillation. Basically what this means, when it's positive, the jet stream is really, really strong. We're talking about the polar jet. So it keeps all that cold air tightly packed up to the poles where it is right now. And you see what's happening. Follow the mouse right over here. And we're right there. So we went super positive after being really negative. This is where we were for that big blast of Arctic air. Notice what is happening. We're going to start to see that shift back as we get towards the first few days of February. That dashed line is the ensemble mean of the models, and that switches back to negative. Typically, once we see that phase shift, it takes a week or two for the atmosphere to realize what's happening, and then we see the ramifications or the teleconnections of that phase change a week or two beyond. That would put us, again, we saw the warmth the first week of February. That would put us towards the second week of February for another round of cold coming through. Then, another important oscillation to look at uh, when you're looking at winter weather, specifically in the Northeast, the North Atlantic Oscillation, that has to do with all, all this blocking over Greenland. And what that does is it keeps any storm tightly packed to the East Coast to give us the moisture. And then it also helps to supply more cold right down the Eastern seaboard. Uh, positive means we're out of luck when it comes to winter weather. But notice here, we start to see that negative we start to get close to about that neutral and then eventually negative. Some ensembles get pretty negative uh, getting out to the first few days of February. So we have two models kind of changing here, or two oscillations, I, so, I should say, that would suggest that we do have more cold coming back. And uh, note again, we're super positive. So both of the big-time oscillations that uh, you look for to have winter weather, the opposite of that. So that means, I mean, it's really, really hard to get a good widespread winter weather when the AO and the NAO are super positive like that. And then just for fun, the Pacific North America, that's the PNA, that's when the when it's positive, the ridge is out west, the trough is in the east. We see it get a little bit negative as we, uh, or stay positive, it gets a little bit negative. So that would be kind of the two out of three deal that we have, but it the ensembles do get it back to the positive side as we would get into that same realm. Meaning, if we have that ridge in the west, if we have the blocking over Greenland, and we have the jet stream buckling, that would suggest that in that realm anyway, again, this isn't forecasting a specific storm, it's forecasting a favorable pattern that if we got a storm to come through, we'd be looking at this potentially having enough cold air and... Uh, the pattern to be right. It's all about pattern recognition and some of the oscillations there going out over the next couple of weeks are going to suggest that wow, winter is going to take a significant break, uh, both in the intensity of the cold and the longevity of there not being much cold left over. There'll be a few little days again as we showed you there where some cold comes in, but in terms of a big blast of Arctic air, might have to wait till the middle of February. For that, we'll keep you posted right here on this channel. If you found this content helpful, please hit that subscribe button. And if you want to stay updated, of course, on all things weather, of course, that season that shall not be named and the summer's coming around the corner, we have you covered. That's hurricane season, by the way, for those that don't know. It starts on June 1st. That's still way out there. Um, La Nina could be coming back. That's something we're going to highlight on this channel as well. And that is not going to be a, a good thing for hurricane season, especially if we keep those super warm ocean anomalies, water temperature anomalies that we had in the so-called down year of El Nino, which was not down if you were following. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Post in the comments where you're watching from, and we will catch you next time.